Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Second Battle of Krithia, located in Krithia, Gallipoli, between British General Aimler Hunter Weston and his 25,000 men from New Zealand, Australia, Britain, and France, and German Commander Otto Lehmann von Sanders and his assistant Eric Weber, leading 20,000 defending Ottoman Turks. This occurred on May 6-8, 1915. The British troops of the 29th Division were exhausted from the repeated Turkish counterattacks from the end of April through May 4th. While they waited and recuperated, they were joined by two brigades from the Australian 2nd Infantry and New Zealand Infantry Brigade. British forces built up more, amassing members from the 29th Indian Brigade, known as the Indian Expeditionary Force G, various Anzac Brigades, and other British troops such as the 42nd East Lancashire. Meanwhile, the Ottoman troops had been building up their own defenses in and around Krithia. Trenches and machine gun nests had sprouted like a hard harvest and were utilizing new camouflage techniques. Aimler Hunter Weston's initial belief that the terrain would be flat had already been proven false, as there were four incredibly large gullies that the British would have to cross to reach Krithia. Aimler had developed another one of his complicated plans involving three phases of the Allied attack. The first would be an overall advance of one mile for all the troops. This would place the French on top of Kareev's Spur, which they would then secure and entrench themselves. This would operate as a forward fire base covering the rest of the troops. The second phase, the British would move up the left in the middle, moving up the Fir Tree Spur and Gully Spur. The assumption is they would capture Krithia easily. Meanwhile, the third phase had less detail but amounted basically to the capture of Akibaba. Also to point out that neither Hunter Weston nor the overall commander, Sir Ian Hamilton, made any effort to bring up medical supplies for the troops. Running behind schedule, the Allies started their attack at 11 a.m. on May 6. They had gone less than 400 yards when they were subject to a withering fire of machine guns and artillery from the Turkish troops. The only troops to reach any goals was the 88th Brigade of the 29th British Division. They reached Fir Tree Spur and captured Fir Tree Wood. No Allied forces reached their goal of the Turkish troops' first defense. In another wonder of Aylmer Hunter Weston, the Allied troops tried the exact same attack on May the 7th, and were even more the worse for wear. By May 8th, the New Zealand troops tried their luck and were stopped yet again. Meanwhile, multiple Anzac units, including the Auckland battalions, reached through fir tree woods to a place known as the Daisy Patch. They unexpectedly found their left flank open to Turkish machine guns in the Gully Ravine and were butchered. Hunter Weston did not care that his troops were pinned down and paying a heavy butcher's bill. He ordered the New Zealand units to continue the attack at 5.30 that evening. The New Zealand Brigade commander, Colonel Francis Earl Johnston, objected to this attack, but Hunter Weston insisted anyways. Hunter Weston was aided in his decision when the overall commander, General Ian Hamilton, ordered all the troops to advance at 5.30 p.m. The attack proved yet again fruitless, resulting in some brigades suffering more than 50% casualties on the Allied side. In addition, the medical supplies were almost non-existent, multiplying the injuries to the Allied forces. Losses for the Allies were the heaviest, suffering 6,500 men killed or wounded, resulting in a slightly higher than 25% casualty rate overall, while the Ottomans suffered less than 2,000 killed and wounded roughly only 10% of their own. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.